Namaste. Welcome to the online samosa. Today's topic is what is a high level understanding of enlightenment? <laughs> it is a, a mouthful, a brain full of a topic. And it's an important topic because there should be a natural curiosity to understand what is this thing that people talk about. So up front, I want to say a few things. We don't recommend that you make enlightenment a goal to get there. Not your optimal ideal path, especially if you are a Jnan Margi or you are more of a knowledge-based person. Okay. Similarly, if you are a Bhakt Mark or love-based path primarily, also it is not a good goal because then your goal has to be, I need to understand, I want to love God and God should love me, for mm. example. So how we get there is not what we are discussing today. <laughs> That's part of our another, another series we will start. But in these seven steps, we are just telling you that if you once you start to make progress, mm. and you everybody is making progress, this is what the experience is like. And at the highest level, called enlightenment or becoming one, one is called oneness is a better name because that's what you experience. You don't nobody arrives there and feels I am enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> And what we're going to talk about is, we're going to talk a little bit about a general knowledge about this area, but what we are going to tell, it comes from my experience, our experience, my experience, right? Meaning that if I don't have that experience, I should talk about it. I mm -hmm. should only talk about what you understand. And when you don't understand something, say, this is not my experience, it's what I hear. It's called integrity. You must have integrity. That's the first point. Second is that even though enlightenment is not an accomplishment, what you realize once you reach a higher level of oneness is that you understand that you were, you are what you were all along. Mm. Right? All you did was get rid of falsenesses and ignorances. You didn't add anything to become enlightened. This is you and this is how everybody already is. <laughs> But not when they're covered with ignorance. Then they can't behave in congruity, in with integrity of who they truly are. Okay. Okay, so this is a realization you go through this. The second point. Third point, a lot more enlightenment exists than you realize. Because enlightened people don't walk around transmitting and just showing off that I'm enlightened. They, they just want to help. They become selfless in their own way. And many times they have some quirks. Depends on your path to enlightenment and you know your journey. Mm. And especially out in the West or outside of India, when people get enlightened, and people are getting enlightened everywhere in this world, there's no guru or no particular teacher to help you get into that place where you are able to know how to get rid of some of these quirks. Right? Right. Because that requires some deeper knowledge just for quirk removal, not for actual self-realization. Okay. So many times you'll find a lot more of these selfless, oneness, you know, united people have a bunch of quirks and you should just ignore them if you can. Okay. You should look at, are they really living and helping in a selfish, selfless way? Then now let's talk about what you will get with us explaining what is enlightenment. And what you will get is what we call an academic understanding. So you will not get the experience just by listening to this. Right? If you've already achieved a little bit, if you've already been able to see or experience some parts of this, yes, you'll kind of say, oh, yeah, I think I understand that. But you may not fully, and we will continue to say, your understanding will remain academic. Okay. Some of the experiences might appear close to you, but the actual experience, meaning when your ego is fully dead, is different. It's different than the occasional experience of that of being enlightened, shall we say, or reaching oneness. Okay. When a person reaches this state of seeing that they truly are like this without the ignorances, they see the world differently. They see themselves differently. And they are able to see the ignorance based universe as well as the ignorance free reality. And they're able to see it together simultaneously. That's the tough thing. Right? You can see a flower and you can see the reality of that flower. That's the truth.
true reality of that flower, which is not necessarily the flower, but some <laughs> knowledge. <laughs> You're able to see that simultaneously. It's like being able to uh, see a snake, and you know, when you when you open a door at early in the morning or late in the evening, and you outside the door, you see this S-shaped object, and it looks like a snake. You look again; it moves. Right? When you're enlightened, you can see the snake and the rope at the same time. You can see the ghost and the post at the same time. <laughs> then the next point, the experience, you have also experienced infinite time and you experience that time is only in the moment. So your understanding of infinity becomes available, but you also understand that the only experience of time is in the moment. The understanding of some concepts and physics concepts changes. Very interesting, you lose all fear of death. All fear, in fact. In fact, the root of fear vanishes. Okay. Now you have a healthy respect for things that should be respected. Venomous snakes, etc., etc. But you don't hit the snake. You don't have fear, un unfathomable fear of things. Right? Things are the way they are. They all have a right to be the way they are. Okay. Some things can still be improved and you try to work on them. Okay. You experience this oneness, you suddenly you experience at the moment this oneness, this attach, this feeling that you are in fact one with everything. Everything is you. You are everything, and there in fact is no you. There is no ego. And interestingly, many people will go through an experience of trying to revive their ego after killing, them. <laughs> after it dies naturally, just call that it. And it's interesting. I love doing that. And when you cannot resuscitate the ego, no matter how hard you try, and you try from 15 different methods, I think that helps. You make sure that your ego stays down. Or vanish. it just vanishes, actually. You realize it was never true. Was, there was never any entity, true entity, or it was a fake entity that had to be created to help your survival. And there was no reality behind it. You, you can see that. And as a result, the fake entity cannot become alive again. But it is still possible for semi-enlightened people or close to the border people to feel that they are there. And the ego can help convince you while remaining somewhat alive inside. <laughs> so some, many times, pretty much you need a guru or you need to go through some deeper, deeper, deeper mystic experiences to truly understand that your ego is dead. Okay. We don't recommend that. The recommendation is you find a teacher, you help them help you. <laughs> understand what part of the ego or the quirks still remain and get rid of it. Okay. Then, so you experience this death of ego, right? Then you experience an exuberant joy. It's not like an emotional pleasure. It's this unending <laughs> joy, infinite, unend. So it you experience that and you, you can it, ex it exists around you all the time. Even though pain may happen, the suffering doesn't happen. If you've seen our, one of our previous videos, we talk about the difference between pain and suffering. Suffering doesn't happen, pain can happen. Yeah. All right. You experience both Maya and Pachit at the same time, which is another, another way to say the other thing that we just talked about, right? Which is experience both. So, you are actually able to see the power of Maya and its utility even. So you realize that this uh, illusion, which is not really an illusion in the magic sense, it's not a magic trick kind of illusion. It is illusion because it is not real. It's temporary. <laughs> so you're able to see that and its value. There is this experience that either you can experience it either like I'm living in an ocean of joy or there's a rain of joy. You, feel, you can experience it. You can experience it either way or both ways simultaneously. Meaning there's infinite, there's infinite love. In, you live in an ocean of love. You experience that. And if that love rejuvenates, refills, it, it, uh, it does what it does inside you. And you can just tap into it any time or it's there all the time. Similarly, power and wealth, when appropriate, because you understand the rules of karma, become available. They are not a limitation for you. You get power. Right? Depending on a lot of 
understanding <laughs> of the rules of the universe that you want to go change or create. How do you want to modify Maya? Because the method by which an enlightened person helps educate other people is through transmission of knowledge, real knowledge, but using the tools of Maya only. Of using the world, the, the temporariness of this universe provides this power to use it. Okay, so within that, the, you have an inability to see the difference between you and others. You can try. You're, you're also me. <laughs> you have the ability. You, inability. You cannot. Oh, you you cannot. cannot separate. Yeah. Oh. You cannot. You cannot just temporarily say you're separate from me. You're hurting me. I'm hurting me. <laughs> wow. Okay, so that that is, so that gives you some idea, an academic <laughs> understanding of what is enlightenment. Yeah. Okay. Now, it doesn't mean that you will experience it just from our talk. So my question to Yamini is, what do you think? In total, what do you think about this subject? Not what is your experience of it? Yeah, okay. there's no experience okay. actually. Okay. But the subject, yes, um, it's good to know what really? exactly. Really? Yeah. Was it, yeah it, it satisfied some curiosity? Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. Because we heard this word enlightenment, okay. right? Okay. But what exactly it is? Yeah. So we you have showed these are the steps. Oh no, these are yeah. Well, we have yeah, we haven't shown the how yet. How? But what is exactly? Yeah. 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 We, we have explained the the concept. Experience of it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so in my terms, I mean, I mean there are some things very easy to understand or oh, lose the fear of death. Yeah. Not an easy thing to do. Yeah. But and you can assume that it maybe it happens. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. And then the rain of joy, yeah. the love you're talking about, yeah. means nothing bothers you. Not painfully. <laughs> Things bother you, but you're able to still see it in love, through love. Well, what bothers you is the fact that, uh, that there is Maya confusing more people. Okay. So you want to fix that Maya. Because why do you want all these souls, all these people mm -hmm. to suffer unnecessarily when they could easily be on this side. Yes. So you yes. want to try and move people Correct. to a high level of elevation because then you can see how much better life can be for them and they are desiring it already. They don't even know it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So one of the points I didn't make is that what should you desire then mm -hmm. along the journey and what you should desire is I want to know myself truly who I am in a way that I am consistent with my definition of who I come up with, what the I definition I come up with for me has to have integrity and pure 100% consistency without any exceptions. I am seeking that self-definition. This is the propeller. This is what you should want. Not enlightenment, not moksha, not anything, not siddhis, not fear of death, removal, etc., etc. Those are not, those are just side effects. Side effects of this journey. Hmm. I need to understand me and I need to have a clear, non-contradictory, highly integral definition of who am I, what am I. That is a driver to get you here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or, yeah. or if you go other paths like mm. bhakti, then it is out of God. But okay. it's also driven similarly. Yes. Okay. So you're teaching Vedanta to us. Yeah. We've okay. been learning Vedanta from you. Yeah. Uh, the first question you actually gave us yeah, was, was, who am I? Yeah, write it down. Write it down. And then we'll begin to modify it. Yes. Yeah. And after a year or two years, you see it, you again go back yeah. into it, yeah. visit it again, see yeah. things must have changed or may not have changed. Yeah. Right? Good. Yeah. So that's, but that's your powerhouse. Okay. okay. So who am I? So yeah. everybody should be first know. Yeah. Chasing that. Chasing that question. Yeah. Okay. Well, if this ends our series of the seven, seven, seven yeah, yeah, seven part, That's and now we will talk about some other concepts as well as how to elevate, how to actually. We have not covered any of the house yet. Okay, a warm namaste from Yamini Meter and from Sandeep Tiwari.